my name is Sridhar and this is hard. <laughs> it's not coming out. Uh, <laughs> all right. Uh, so yeah, like Akash mentioned, I used to do a lot of jokes about uh, politics and news and current affairs. Uh, but now uh, it's become difficult, right? Because the news is funny. Uh, <laughs> how do you top that? <laughs> um, I'm actually not from Mumbai. I'm from Bangalore. I moved to the city uh, five years back. Okay, and uh, it's a very interesting city, right? Mumbai is very difficult to adjust to in the beginning because it's a very hard working city. Mumbai, I think, is the hardest working city in the entire world. Yeah, and the reason for that is Salman Khan. <laughs> <laughs> because think about this, okay? In this city, if you don't work hard, you can't pay your rent. <laughs> You'll have to sleep outside, which is. <laughs> I'm glad I had that little explainer of the joke. <laughs> yeah. You know, the thing is, uh, uh, I love uh, Bangalore, despite all, it, all the complaints people have about the city. People keep complaining, right? Saying, oh, traffic is too much. Because, you know, in Mumbai, there's no traffic. <laughs> Such a very makhan life here. <laughs> and the only thing that stops you in Mumbai uh, from going from Bandra to, let's say, Lower Parel is poverty, right? <laughs> it's, <laughs> Not the traffic. <laughs> yeah, it's different. Uh, and the biggest complaint people have with Bangalore is the airport. They say Bangalore airport is too far. I love that airport, okay? I think it's my favorite airport in the in entire world because it's the only airport in the world where uh, when you're going to the airport, no, you actually feel like you're going somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> like it's a whole process. If the flight is 6 p.m. in the evening, in the morning you wake up with a thought. <laughs> Today is my flight. And the entire day is you are doing mathematics. 6 p.m. flight means 4 p.m. I have to reach. That means I have to start booking the cab at 10 a.m. in the morning. <laughs> yeah. But Bangalore was in the uh, news for the wrong reasons last year uh, because there was a lot of flooding. Okay? And people made fun of uh, Bangalore, which was okay, it's fine, you can make fun of things, it's uh, completely cool. But what hurt me the most was my friends in Mumbai. <laughs> <laughs> Made fun of Bangalore for flooding. <laughs> and if you know this, uh, Mumbai actually was uh, seven islands in the past. If you don't trust me, every monsoon you can see them. <laughs> All up here, right? uh, but the flooding happened in Bangalore primarily because uh, in Bangalore the infrastructure is is not that great now. Okay. Uh, in Bangalore, we don't have a lot of physical infrastructure because in Bangalore, we build everything on the cloud. <laughs> but I think the real reason why the flooding happened last year was because a lot of builders no, in uh, Bangalore have built their buildings on encroached land. They have encroached upon lakes and built buildings which is causing the flooding. Which, you know, doesn't happen in Bombay. <laughs> no, no, in Mumbai there's no encroachment. We call it acclamation. It's a, it's a, it's, it's a great PR. <laughs> Nothing else. Yeah. But the biggest shock I had though uh, when I moved to the city was that uh, there's a clear divide, right, in the city. There's a whole, uh, uh, you know, South Bombay and a poor Bombay. <laughs> I was not privy to this. Okay. And uh, what uh, shook me the most uh, was that in South Bombay, uh, autos are banned. Right? How can you ban one mode of transport like that? <laughs> yeah. I, but I think now that I've lived in the city for five years, I understand the logic. Maybe back in the day when autos used to fly in South Bombay, if the auto guy said no, uh, they would buy the auto. <laughs> <laughs> it became unsustainable, right? <laughs> Anyways, I, I, I love the city. It's been about five years and uh, I, I think I've become a, a proper Mumbai kar now, okay? Because uh, last week, I did the most Mumbai thing ever. I went to Goa. <laughs> <laughs> people of Mumbai love Goa, right? It's just crazy. I, and, and it's not so much Goa that excites them, it's the process of going to Goa I think is more exciting, right? Like you're packing your bags, you're like, Goa, Goa, Goa. You're on the way to the airport, you're like, Goa, Goa. You're in the flight, you're like, go, go, go. The flight lands and you're like, oh, Juhu. Uh, <laughs> 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 
It's exactly the same. <laughs> Minus the population. <laughs> The first thing that hits you when you land in Goa is that you can't book a cab. Like, Ola and Uber are banned there. It's crazy. <laughs> Which is also not surprising because in Goa, na, things uh, take time to come. It's a little slow. Like, even independence in Goa came 14 years later. <laughs> like, 1947, India was independent. Goa was hungover. Like, yeah. <laughs> but Goa got its independence on uh, December 19th, by the way. Just in time for sunburn. But while I was in Goa, I uh, happened to meet a few Russians. Um, <laughs> off duty, uh, in broad daylight. Uh, they also have a life outside of uh, their uh, expertise. Uh, so, <laughs> You know, these Russians have no idea that the, there's a war happening in Ukraine. You know, it's almost one year of that war, right? And these guys have, like, I spoke to them, like, guys, uh, it's pretty bad in the world right now. How are you guys dealing with it? They were like, yeah, man, it's uh, pretty bad uh, back, in, back at home. Uh, we have no McDonald's now. <laughs> you know, it's been one year of the war. Uh, when the war began, all of us thought the world will end now. You know, last year, around this time, like, oh, done, done, Russia has uh, declared war. World War III is happening, uh, I have to submit my resignation now <laughs> and live my passion, right? And then salary came. Anyways. Uh, <laughs> so, when the war began, uh, all the countries came together uh, to strategize uh, on how to stop this, right? They came together and had a meeting in the United Nations and passed a resolution saying, uh, Russia is bad, Ukraine is good, vote now. <laughs> So most countries voted, saying uh, Putin is a bad guy. Except India and China. <laughs> India and China abstained from voting. Can you believe this? Two of the most populous countries in the world uh, practiced abstinence. <laughs> <laughs> See, I had a whole Putin pull-out joke also. <laughs> I just thought you were a smarter audience, right? Yeah. It, it's crazy, you know, one year back, all of us were anxious, but no, now nobody cares, but the war is still on, by the way. It, it's still happening, people are dying, it's, it's as bad. It's because we're a generation of Netflix users, right? <laughs> we're like, pura episode ek din mein dalna. <laughs> <laughs> we can't keep up with the war. Like, we have to binge watch this footage. <laughs> Uh, but one guy became very popular uh, through the entire war, uh, which, uh, Zelensky. Zelensky, Ukraine's president, by the way, who was a stand-up comedian earlier. Yeah, <laughs> yeah like this. He used to do shows uh, where nobody laughed. Uh, <laughs> but I think that experience is helping him now. <laughs> because if you see, Zelensky is completely unfazed because he was a stand-up comedian. He's used to the bombing. <laughs> <laughs> but it's fine. I think uh, it's not just the world. Even uh, uh, India also has a lot of uh, reasons to uh, worry about and think about. You know, we have been going through our own set of problems, uh, like Bollywood, right? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> like Bollywood has been a big trouble for this country. Uh, last year, when uh, Brahmastra came out, it was a war, right? Like everybody was losing their mind. And uh, I watched the movie also. Brahmastra, you guys watched the movie? Yeah. yeah, some of you did, others are happy, cool. Uh, so, uh, I watched the movie, the movie is a 3D movie by the way. Yeah. When you go to the theatre, they give you a glass, 3D movie. Which doesn't make any sense, because the movie has no depth. It's completely devoid of it. If you've seen the movie, uh, movie has three villains, by the way. Uh, a story, screenplay and dialogue. <laughs> Yeah. The other big uh, incident or event that's happening in the country is uh, Gautam Adani's unfolding documentary, right? It's like, <laughs> like it's live. <laughs> you know that bad boy billionaire, the <laughs> next season will have. <laughs> Every news item you're saying is going to be a part of that documentary. Right? <laughs> but a lot of people are saying that uh, Gautam Adani is apparently a nice guy. Uh, he is a patriot, unlike Vijay Malya or Nirav Modi. They're like, he'll never leave the country. <laughs> I'm like, bro, uh, Gautam Adani is very smart. He's bought half the airports. <laughs> if 
he wants to leave, he can leave. <laughs> Nobody will stop him. And funny enough, Adani also operates half the ports of the country and abroad as well, like a lot of ports. A company that is sinking um, <laughs> is, is in charge of the ports. Yeah, it's, it's incredible. Indians, Indians like celebrating uh, people, right? Like businessmen and uh, otherwise also. Like for example, Rishi Sunak. Remember last year? It was a big deal. Like Indians were very proud of him uh, on WhatsApp. <laughs> Everybody, right? Uh, in fact, uh, when Rishi Sunak became the Prime Minister, uh, a lot of people compared him to Manmohan Singh. <laughs> yeah, because Manmohan Singh had a very similar career trajectory. Finance Minister and then Prime Minister. Rishi Sunak also, Finance Minister and then Prime Minister. The only difference though is that Rishi Sunak uh, doesn't report to the Queen. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of UK, um, remember when COVID happened, uh, all of us uh, were feeling very bad uh, because of this virus called as coronavirus. I googled to understand the meaning of this virus. Apparently, corona in Latin uh, means crown, which makes sense, right? A virus that killed millions of people was named after the crown. So it will activate. Enough, enough bitching about the UK now. <laughs> Come back to India and Indian things. Uh, these days I've been watching this show uh, called as uh, Shark Tank India. Mm -hmm. You guys have seen Shark Tank India? Yeah. It's, it's, it's based on this US reality show called as uh, Shark, Shark Tank, Tank USA. So same name. Okay. Uh, Shark Tank uh, as a name makes sense in USA because there are sharks. Like when you go to swim, no? there are sharks who kill people. So it's very scary. India has no relevance for sharks. <laughs> And they still call it Shark Tank India. I'm like, say, look at some local names, right? They could have easily called it uh, the Crocodile Corner. <laughs> <laughs> or Tiger Cage. Or a place where a lot of animals exist, like IIT Bombay. <laughs> <laughs> but the reason why people love this show is because Indians love a show where you can make money. Right? Like KBC, for example. Karpati is one of the longest running uh, shows in this country and people love this love this show and this show has eight participants in the beginning uh, with eight unique sad stories <laughs> you seen that the, the stories are very unique like there's no overlap also somebody's brother cannot see the other guy's sister cannot walk <laughs> like this clear separation right? <laughs> on all these eight people in the beginning play a game uh, called as uh, fastest finger first uh, very unnecessary name. <laughs> <laughs> show watched by families in the night. I don't think they should. <laughs> what makes it worse is that the winner of the fastest finger first uh, gets the hot seat. The eight people play the game and only one of them uh, gets the hot seat. The other seven uh, go back home with no money and a copy of their sad story. <laughs> so these seven people are not only poor, they're also aware of how poor they are now. <laughs> they have video proof, right? <laughs> it's, it's and, uh, Amitabh Bachchan uh, is this great man in the show who's been running it for a very long time. And there are lifelines in the show, okay? And the uh, lifeline that is very popular back in the day uh, was uh, Phone a Friend. You remember Phone a Friend? The massively popular uh, lifeline where Amitabh Bachchan used to call and then say, uh, my Amitabh Bachchan bowl round, right? The other person is like, oh shit, my polio bowl gaya. It's very legendary back in the day. Okay? Now they've replaced that lifeline with something called as a video call a friend. Okay? And in this option, Amitabh Bachchan again calls the, part the, the uh, participant's friend and then says, uh, uh, my Amitabh Bachchan bowl round. I'm like, if that person does not know that you're Ramadha Bachchan on a video call, uh, I don't think they'll know the answer also. <laughs> it's a pointless exercise, right? And Amita makes insane amounts of money, okay? He makes a lot of money from this show uh, for doing nothing. Like, he does not even press a button, by the way. He says, uh, Computer Mahashai, agla uh, question dikhao. And it's not like this computer is a smart, artificial intelligence enabled voice recognition system. No, no. <laughs> There's a guy sitting in the studio pressing buttons on his command. <laughs> like an expensive lift operator. 
But I think the only reason Amitabh Bachchan does this show is because uh, after the shoot is done, he calls Abhishek Bachchan and then says, uh, listen, I did nothing today um, and I still made money. <laughs>